Hey guys, Jimmy Marine here with another video. This one I am doing a boot camp story. Um, as you can see by the title, it's called Early Chow, Late Chow. And what this is, is so whenever you go somewhere, you have to, almost always, you have to have somebody staying in your barracks when you're in boot camp, in your barracks to um, keep an eye on it, make sure no one comes in, steals your shit. I can guarantee nothing's ever been stolen, you know, by some recruit who's fucking sneaking around. But it's just to teach you, you know, fire watch, making sure you're always watching your stuff. Um, but, so you always have to have somebody there. So, when you, when it's chow time and the platoon's going to go, your drill instructors will pick two people, because you always, you never go anywhere by yourself. They'll pick two recruits to go to early chow. So they'll go ahead of the platoon, eat chow, and then come back so that the people who stay back to watch the uh, watch the uh, barracks can then go to chow, and those guys will be late chow. Um, <clears throat> now, early chow and late chow is something that you want to get selected for because it's fucking awesome. Um, chances are you're not going to be able to like, volunteer. Your DIs will just pick whoever they want. Um, but the reason why early child and late child is so great, especially late child, is because <clears throat> you're not, you have to eat quickly. Don't get me wrong, you can't just lollygag, take your sweet ass time. But you can eat quicker, or I'm sorry, you can eat at a more relaxed pace than you would when you're with your platoon. Um, depending on the day, on what you have going on, your drill instructors are going to rush you through very very quickly you're going to be shoveling the food in your mouth and you're in there for like five minutes and you're leaving <clears throat> for me I know it's not enough time to enjoy a meal um, so I always hated that I got to go to early chow and late chow a couple times it was amazing um, because then too you can have dessert if you're ballsy and you don't think any other drill instructors will mess with you you can have you know you can eat more, you can pick specifically what you like, you can do a lot more. And it's nice to have that every now and then. Um, now the story part of this comes from my platoon, my uh, my kill hat was uh, Sergeant McMillan. And he was a crazy bastard, but he, uh, for late chow, or early chow, I mean it really depended, but he would always pick two other guys in our platoon who whose last name started with Mick. One was my buddy that I went to high school with, uh, McClellan, and the other one was McFarlane, I believe. And so he would always call up his two Micks to go to Chow. And so they'd go, and they were always happy as can be, especially my buddy McClellan. And they'd come back freaking nice and full. They'd had dessert. They got, you know, some of the really good-ass Chow Hall food, and... <clears throat> we're able to eat it at a, at a normal pace, and uh, I was rack mates with my buddy McClellan, and he would always rub in my face, and it made me want to slap him, because uh, he just every time he would just rub in my face, and uh, and uh, well, this one time, so and I'm kind of all over the place. This one time, he came back and he ate a ton, and you can just tell that he was full of shit. And before you go to bed every night, you have to chug one canteen of water at least. If it's going to be really hot the next day, you have to chug two. And a canteen is, is it 16 ounces? I think it's 16 ounces, which isn't a ton of water. But when you're chugging it, you know, some people just can't chug water. But when you're chugging it, it fills you up your stomach and you kind of feel like bloated afterwards. Um, and... My buddy, he could, for whatever reason, he's had a really hard time chugging water in a normal, you know, normal time, normal situation. But this time, he was just full as fuck. And he had to drink the water, and he obviously didn't think about this. And when you're done drinking out of your canteen, you got to turn it over with the cap off, proving that it's empty. And so I chugged mine, 
and he starts to chug his, and we're right across from our guide. He is directly across from him. Like, if you look straight ahead, his guide, our guide's two feet, two or three feet in front of him, because um, the guide's rack is in the middle of the squad bay, um, <clears throat> up towards the drone instructor hut, which you'll get intimately familiar with, I'm sure. And so he starts drinking his canteen, and he gets all of it down, and I see him kind of like hunch over, like you're standing there at attention, kind of attention with your arms straight out in front of you and you have the canteen upside down and you're just standing there waiting for the drill instructor to check you so you can put it away and McClellan dumbass had chugged it and it really upset his stomach and so he ended up having to throw up and you just see our guide was like motherfucker <laughs> and he so McClellan ended up trying to hide it because you don't want to just puke on the floor because that's obviously going to bring attention to you. So he ends up puking, most of it ends up puking into his canteen. And in that case, he didn't turn it upside down because he didn't want to get vomit all over the floor. And our <clears throat> and McMillan came by, and and he's in his Charlie's, by the way, which is like his nice Corfram boots, like, or not boots, but shoes, the shiny ones, the shiny black ones. And... Uh, he comes up and he sees McClellan's canteen is right side up. And he starts cussing at him and telling him to to chug his canteen. And you could tell, just I kind of glanced at him, and you can tell that he knew what was going on. And so he's telling McClellan to, to drink his canteen. And he's just like, oh, he's like, fuck. He's like, you know, aye, aye, sir. And he goes and he drinks the canteen. And he starts to drink it. And you could tell he gets one chunk from whatever it is he had eaten. And it just chain reaction. He ends up projectile vomiting all over our guide. It got all over the floor, all over the guide's rack. He got on himself, and then some of it splashed on our DI's boots, or on his core frames, rather. And just all hell broke loose. <laughs> McMillan was so pissed. And he got a little bit on me, because he tried to save it by putting it back in his canteen, but it was too much. Dude, it was way too much. And, uh, and I'm trying not to laugh. It was the funniest fucking thing I'd ever seen. And, uh, and you know, our drone instructor was just like, you could tell he didn't know what the fuck to do. He was freaking out. And uh, he ended up making McClellan clean it up. He had to scrub it up. Then he, he sent the guide and McClellan to go shower because they're fucking covered in vomit, both of them. And uh, then he hazed Shane even more, McClellan. He hazed him for, uh, for, uh, fucking getting puke all over all over his core frames oh man it was absolutely hilarious um and so that was that was just a priceless time that was just one of those boot camp stories that you were you know I'm gonna remember forever and, and you guys are gonna have very similar ones I'm sure just stuff that'll always will always make you laugh when you think about it uh but yeah <laughs> you guys wanted a few a few boot camp stories I got couple more on the top of my head that I could talk about but I'll make that into separate videos um uh, look at my phone here and uh <laughs> oh man just thinking about that shit makes me laugh um yeah I hope you guys enjoyed it as always if you have any questions suggestions things you want me to talk about hit me up on Facebook on Twitter or here don't matter and uh I'll get it on my to-do list and I'll get the video out as soon as I can for you Alright guys, appreciate you watching. I'll see you next time. Sip five.